Okay, we're happy to have uh, Dennis to give a part three of this talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's uh, <laughs> uh, hang on, which one was uh, I'm not, I'm not using this board. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, part three. <laughs> So it's, the talk is uh, enumerative. I oh, know that that board was making noise. Right? Enumerative uh, mirror symmetry. For moduli space. So, yeah, so the last two talks, I, I mean, some kind of a general theory was presented that is applicable to any kind of a modular space of sheaves on the on the surface. But still, when you when you think about modular space of sheaves on surface, the first thing that comes in your mind is Hilbert scheme of points, right? I mean, in the sense that it's the one that's given, kind of, it's there, and that you don't have to make any choice. And all others are some kind of a matter of taste. But there is a there is a high rank. I mean, there is also there there, there exists like a higher rank modular space of sheaves, a modular space of sheaves of higher rank, which are kind of also given by God, like Hilbert schemes. And this is like this is the bungee on a, on a curve, right? So <laughs> I'll change a bit the notation, and uh, so x will be because there will be two curves now. X will be a smooth curve. Of genus uh, at least two over complex numbers, and then C will be the same curve as uh, in the previous talk. And so, we'll this what one can consider one can take a modular space of G bundles on X, right? And it's, it's arguably one of the uh, one of the most fundamental objects in, the, in, the, in at least in this branch of pure mathematics and the, and the not least uh, fundamental is uh, is uh, its cotangent bundle the total space of its cotangent bundle and so what is modular space of Higgs bundles essentially this is just a this is just a stable locus sitting inside this uh, total space of a cotangent bundle of bungee. So this is. And so MG is a stable locus. So this is a or modular space of Higgs bundles. Stable Higgs bundles, G bundles. And so let me give you uh, just a proper definition, nicer definition. So what is a Higgs bundle? Um, I will actually give a definition of a Higgs sheaf, a Higgs sheaf. So a, a pair F and phi is a Higgs sheaf on X, where uh, F is just some uh, sheaf on X, and uh, and phi is a uh, is an element. It's called Higgs field, and it's an element from uh, it's a map from F from that sheaf to F tensor. With a canonical of x, okay, and will be referred to as Higgs field. So why? How does a? How does this definition relate to the previous one? Uh, well, if you using the serdality, I mean, it's just a Higgs field can be seen as a also a cotangent direction. 
to, uh, to your bundle in uh, inside uh, in the side bungee. Okay, and so we'll consider just we'll consider the modular space of uh, uh, stable Higgs uh, SL, uh, SLN sheaves and PGLN sheaves or SLN bundles and PGLN bundles. So what are those? So M SLN. Okay. So this is pairs Higgs sheaves on X such that we have a fixed determinant, fixed determinant, trace of your Higgs field is equal to zero. And then uh, I, mean, I will usually drop it from notation, we kind of fix the degree. Um, but uh, I'll, for the most of the talk, I will not uh, indicate it in notation. So we fix the degree of the, of the shift is equal to D and then the rank well, rank is also fixed, and it will be SLR. I mean, R uh, rank of rank R. So SLR, is, uh, I mean, why SL? Well, because you fix the determinant, so fixing the determinant is somehow passing, it's like passing from JLN to SLN. And then also, since you're working with a Higgs field, uh, Higgs shifts, you have to take the trace zero of the Higgs field. Uh, so this will be, sorry, this will be semi-stable. This will be uh, semi-stable locus, and the stability is defined just as for uh, for bundles. Uh, but you evaluate the the stability function on a uh, on those uh, subshifts that are invariant with respect to the Higgs field, so that whose inclusion commutes with the uh, Higgs field. So this is a. Uh, this is a model space of um, SLN Higgs bundles on uh, on X on a curve X. And so the second one that we'll consider is the in the case of a G equal PG, uh, PGL. So this is a semi-stable. Um, Higgs general bundles, and the, in fact, um, well, you can define them uh, as a, as a, same as a, uh, in the case of uh, SLN, but uh, a better definition is, and it's more like a theorem that can be taken as a definition, is the following one. You can take uh, your M. You can take your modular space of SLN bundles, and you can quotient down by the you can quotient down by the R torsions in your Jacobi. So, and take it as a as an order fold, as a stack. So this is a R torsion line bundles. Okay. So, I mean, Jacobian naturally acts on a on model of sheaves, right? You just take a sheaf and you tensor it with a line bundle. And what I'm saying is that model space of PGLN bundles, of PGLN Higgs bundles, can be defined as a quotient of a model space of SLN bundles by the Jacobian, by R, tor R torsion of the Jacobian. So this is called uh, Stockholm. Uh, Stockholm. Uh, not here. So did you mention the definition for stable? Yeah, so okay, let me just say that, write it on the board. So so the a, a Higgs sheaf is a semi stable if for all all phi invariant Uh, subshifts 
the, the slope you know, of this uh, subship is less or equal to the slope of f, where the slope is defined as uh, usual by degree over arc. Okay. By phi invariant, I mean those that factor through uh, factor through the Higgs field. Yeah, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just not going to be symplectic homomorphic, but right, right. Uh, uh, what, what is the, uh, what is the question? Something, something can be, you think of your theory survived by a Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Well, I, I'll say, let me also say the following then. So, in fact, I mean, we, we haven't changed the setting at all, because uh, uh, this is a, uh, so Higgs sheaves are, so the data of a Higgs sheaf, is just equivalent to one dimensional uh, compactly supported uh, sheaf on the total space of a total space of a uh, uh, canonical yeah 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 sorry for uh, for Jalen. Well, I mean, for SLN, it's just uh, uh, taking the, I mean, fixing the determinant and trace to be zero. So, so this data is equivalent to one dimensional compactly supported sheaf on uh, total of a cotangent uh, bundle on X. Uh, and the association is very simple. So you take, I mean, you, you, there is a natural projection, right? So this is called the spectral curve construction. But one way is very easy. Uh, one way is very easy, so you just take a one-dimensional one-dimensional sheaf. So there is an actual projection to x, right, to the curve, and you just push forward. So going this way, you just push forward uh, by the natural projection. The other way is a spectral curve construction. So you're taking the um, kind of a relative uh, a characteristic polynomial of your Higgs field, and it will live in the, in the in the fibers of the cotangent. And yeah, uh, so again, uh, answering, I mean, there is an I wrote it, answering your question. So uh, twisting it just corresponds to taking the total space of a different line. Uh, so yeah, so it's just the same setting where we're just taking one model space of one dimension uh, compactly supported sheaves on the uh, total spaces of line bundles and curves. It's just that uh, this, it's a matter of taste, which one, which formulation you consider. Uh, just for what I'm gonna say, for me, it's just psychologically uh, easier to consider it in terms of the uh, Higgs field, uh, Higgs shifts rather than one, uh, one dimensional compactly supported shifts. Uh, so yeah, uh, what is the, uh, why, why, why Higgs fields? So let me, why, oh, sorry, why Higgs shifts? Uh, let me move on to the next uh, part then. So, mirror symmetries. So, essentially, I mean, there are, <laughs> well, Kapustin, there is a paper by Kapustin Witten. Uh, which essentially says that, well, uh, geometric Langlands, <laughs> I mean, I'll drop some fancy words and I cannot really. Uh, don't ask me what it means exactly, but let me just write it. Uh, so geometric uh, Langlands correspondence is roughly speaking a uh, mirror symmetry uh, for uh, for modular space of Higgs uh, Higgs bonds. Where you exchange uh, gel uh, uh, the group G and it's Langlands dual. So I mean, <laughs> and it, it is kind of a productive. I guess it's, it it is a productive point of view. So uh, I mean, for example, and and Go proved uh, some so-called fundamental 
lemma and lang in uh, Langlands correspondence using using the geometry of modular space of uh, Higgs bundles. But we'll consider some much simpler incarn mathematical incarnation of a mirror symmetries uh, of these uh, Higgs bundles. So we'll consider the, the basic one to start with is so-called SYZ mirror symmetry. I'll, I'll write MS for mirror symmetries. So SYZ mirror symmetry, so what is state? Uh, well, if you take your uh, modular spaces of uh, Higgs SLN bundles, it has a natural projection uh, to a fine uh, space, which is given by just the direct sums of uh, of sections of tensor powers of a canonical bundles. Well, what is this association? You just take your Higgs shift and you take the characteristics polynomial of um, of your uh, of your Higgs field. So, and this is this map is called Hitchin. In fact, uh, so the dual of SLN, SLN is uh, PGLN. So the, also the model space of PG, uh, PGLN Higgs bundles admit a natural map to the same affine plane. And it's also called the Hitchin map. And uh, so what is the statement of SYZ mirror symmetry in this situation? It's just that these two, uh, two projections are uh, these two Hitchin vibrations are naturally uh, dual uh, torus Lagrangian, uh, Lagrangian uh, uh, vibrations. So this uh, pi SL and pi PGL uh, dual um, Lagrangian. Torus vibrations, at least uh, generically, I mean, over uh, over the base. So this is uh, this is I guess uh, what can be attributed to Hausel Hausel Thaddeus, two thousand and essentially the beginning of a. Of a mirror symmetry for a modular space of Higgs bundles. So this is a SYZ uh, mirror symmetry. Also, we have a, a topological mirror symmetry. So this is also Hausel Thaddeus in the same year, and. Uh, so what is this? Uh, well, it's just uh, if you take uh, the cohomology of uh, the modular space of SLN bundles, then it's isomorphic to the cohomology, or default cohomology, of uh, modular space of PGLN bundles, Higgs PGLN bundles. I mean, there is a slight technicality. You have to twist it. But roughly speaking, you can just view it as an isomorphism of cohomologies on one side with cohomologies on another side. So this is topological mirror symmetry. Then, I also have, sorry, I forgot the name, I have that one. But, so this topological, then we also have a... Sorry, so what's the subscript on the red Yeah, yeah, uh, twisted, so... So it's a bit technical. If you if you consider it naively, it doesn't hold. You have, you essentially have to take it uh, not as an orbifold. You have to you have to consider this as a gerb. So there is an actual gerb structure on, on this bundle, also on this uh, modular space, and you're taking the orbifold cohomology uh, of that gerb, and uh, then it. Uh, I mean it's. There are ways of twisting. Essentially, if you have a gerb structure, you can. If you have a gerb of your on your orbifold, you can twist your orbifold cohomology. 
but it's also equivalent to consider just orbital cohomology of the total space of a jerp, and then you can pick a certain part of it uh, that you can then call a twisted orbital cohomology. So, and let me, like, the last uh, mirror symmetry that I'll mention before moving on to the topic of the, uh, of the talk. So this is a, uh, I'll call it categorical, uh, categorical mirror symmetry. So this is Donagi. Uh, you mean that? Um, Ah, you mean you mean you mean whether it can yeah yeah I guess I guess this is true yes yeah. that you can lift it to that state yes that's true yeah that was I should have said it's proven so this is this is a theorem this is a theorem as well uh, so this is uh, how the uh, stadios but uh, this is a uh, uh, Grotchening vice. Uh, uh, sorry, I forgot the, the names. Uh, so uh, let me move on to the uh, categorical mirror symmetry. So it's uh, the Nagy Pantsev. Uh, so what is categorical mirror symmetry in this situation? So it's a statement that uh, if you take the right categories of coherent shifts of, uh, among the space of CLN bundles, Roughly speaking, you should be isomorphic to the derived category of uh, sh uh, coherent shifts on the modern space of PGLN bundles. And such that, uh, well, here you have, uh, so, Hecke transformations, or operators, let's call them operators, should be exchanged uh, with a tensoring with some logical bundles. On, uh, on the other side. And this is, this is, I don't know, in the physical literature, I guess it's called Wilson operators. So this, uh, so the, this uh, isomorphism should commute with the taking, acting with the Hecke operators and acting with the uh, tensoring with the bundles on the other side. And so you can see, so what I want to say, why why did why did I mention all that? You can see that it's kind of the mirror symmetry is uh, very different from uh, let's say mirror symmetry of three folds, because you I mean in this silly language of B models and A models, you have a B model matches B model, and on this side as well. <laughs> so I mean the explanation for that is that well if you take model spaces of of this uh, Higgs bundles. So let me write so kind of B model on one side. I mean, I'll write the silly statement sometimes in uh, this talk. Uh, but I guess you know what I mean. So B model one side is equal to B model one other side. Why is that? Well, because we fixed the complex. So the model space of Higgs bundles is a hyperkähler structure. Sorry, it has a, is a hyperkähler manifold. So it has a, it has a P1 of moduli of, uh, of complex structures and compatible Kähler structures. And what happens in fact is that for one of these complex structures, uh, the, there is no swap between A model and B model. So A model goes to A model and B model goes to B model. And this complex structure is exactly given by the model space of Higgs bundles. The other complex structure, for example, is the model space of local systems. And for that one, uh, you don't have this, uh, uh, this symmetry. And so if you, if you kind of combine all of complex structures at once, uh, that should be the topic of, uh, uh, of this capuchin witten paper. But if you restrict just to one complex structure, you have this very nice, clean, mathematically rigorous uh, instances, incarnations of this uh, of, uh, mirror symmetry. And so, so what today? So we'll talk. Uh, I want to present this and uh, this enumerative mirror symmetry. And essentially, the point is that you have the same. As I said, 
there is no swap between A module and A module. So you actually have, if you count curves on one side, you get, uh, I mean, that should be equal to the counting curves on the other side. So roughly speaking, uh, number of curves. Huh? Yeah, yeah, so there is a, there is a change of variables here. Yeah. Uh, you mean uh, you mean for that statement? Uh -huh. There is a there is a change of variables, uh, but change of variables is very simple. Okay. But I'm, again, I'm uh, I'm not doing it in a great generality. That's going to only happen. I mean, in this talk, it's all uh, will take for a, a genus one environment. And there, you actually have uh, explicit formulas. Some of them can be proven, and uh, you can see that they are just. There is a very simple transformation between one side and the other side. So, okay, so what is the enumerative mirror symmetry for Higgs bundles? Well, I mean, I don't know what it should be in the greatest possible generality. I don't know what, what should happen for quantum cohomologies or like k theoretic invariants. Uh, today, I will just explain what happens for genus one invariants. And I guess one can, uh, with a leap of faith, one can. Kind of interpolate it to what should happen in a more general case. Uh, so, number of curves in, uh, in the model space of SLN bundles, Higgs SLN bundles, should be roughly equal to the number of curves in uh, M PGLN bundles. Okay, so this, this is today. Well, I mean, okay, because, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll explain what it means. Well, the Picard of uh, MSNL is uh, of rank one, and the Picard of, of uh, MP, MPJLN is of uh, rank one uh, modulo torsion. Mm -hmm. So the, the generating series that you get on both sides are just one variable generating series. And uh, so when I equate them, I mean uh, that I really equate them. Uh, so I, I take the generating series uh, which parameters keep, whose parameters keep track of the degree with respect to the canonical generator of the Picard. It, it's true that, well, actually, I mean, there is something subtle happens nevertheless. I mean, I'm, it's not exactly true what I'm writing here. Uh, I mean, the, the, the statement is, is kind of more complicated and more interesting. But it's somehow uh, torsion classes. So there are no torsion classes here, but there are torsion classes here, and they enter the formula. And you kind of, you don't really get equality on both sides. You get equality up to some uh, was, uh, like signed uh, summation. I'll, I'll, I'll write it in there. I mean, I'll give it in there. Okay, I see the question. Yeah. Can you explain maybe just the, I think what's the high top figure, what's not figure? <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay, ask it. You can search on YouTube for it. So, okay, Hake operators, I mean, roughly speaking, I mean, I don't know myself very well. This, I mean, this part, I, I'm completely ignorant. I'm just writing it for, uh, to, you know, to set up the background, uh, like the stage. Okay, so it's not useful for uh, Yeah, it's not useful at all. I mean, it can, I mean, in the global. <laughs> In, in, <laughs> no, no, I mean, for, for purposes of this talk, I mean, it's not, uh, of course, in the global picture it is. So heck operator just refers to the fact that you take your sheaf and you modify it at the point. So you take some extension. Uh, uh, and the Wilson operators in this case just refers to tensoring by some sheaf. I mean, it's some, it's very vague here. I don't know, like, uh, it's something that comes from a universal family. <laughs> Look, yes. Uh, so, so, uh, so I'm not, 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 I'm not,
Yeah, exactly. So this 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 Hitchin maps they are generically this is a, this is a torus a Lagrangian torus vibrations. Uh, so generically, you have really the fiber is a smooth torus, mm -hmm. and uh, so meaning the dual uh, the meaning of dual is that you just take the dual. Of, so it's like a point in the fiber consists of line bubble on the dual fiber. Yeah, right. Like and I mean, that's what's uh, kind of cool about it. Uh, so it is, uh, yeah. Like in the P model, I can understand there's a Fourier Mukai transformation. Oh, well, if you wanna, if you wanna comprehend geometrically what's going on. Um, uh, okay, I mean we can talk about it probably later, but I mean I don't know if I can give you like a, a nice. Uh, Satisfactory geometric uh, explanation why there is a equality of uh, counting curves on one side with equality of kind of curves on another side, uh, but uh, it comes out naturally. I mean, I'll, uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, let me let me move on to quasi maps again. <laughs> so quasi maps. Uh, so quasi maps too, and quasi maps play a very essential role here. So it's uh, uh, to And I, when I come, mean actually a number of curves, I mean uh, curves that are, so the, your modular spaces are quasi-maps. Even though in, in this situation, for some degrees, you actually have grown witten theory is equal to quasi-maps here. So quasi-maps, um, uh, so what are quasi-maps here? So, so what, is, what is the pair we consider, right? We consider your, uh, Let's say modeling of these Higgs shifts with a fixed determinant and a, uh, zero trace. But, well, it sits inside the total space of a cotangent bundle, cotangent co complex of a stack of a coherent sheaves on X. And so we consider quasi maps to this pair. I mean, it's just exactly the same setup as uh, we were. I mean, as a setup of the last week. So this is just a, this is just a sheaves essentially on a surface. So what are quasi maps? So, but again, by the same uh, uh, the same arguments, the quasi map is given. What is given by? So it's given by a sheaf. And the Higgs field, but not not, not on the X, but uh, on the, on X times C, right? So this is now a shift on X times C, and now this is the Higgs field. It will be an an element of home from F to F tensored to, uh, by the pullback of a canonical from X. It's just how you define the modulus space, a modulus problem of Higgs, uh, Higgs field. And so uh, that's why you get uh, C is, map from C is given by this data. Of course, what's more, so again, as, a, as before, so as before, you have the, the determinant, determinant of your shift is trivial, I mean, sorry, it's fixed. And then the trace, the trace of the Higgs field uh, on x times c is also zero. Well, because it's zero at each fiber. So this, so the the data of quasi maps to this pair to SLN modulus space is given by this data. Yeah, c is fixed. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, I actually might. So, I mean, I mean, actually, elliptic curve, fixed elliptic curve. Yeah. Well, in, my, in, this, yeah, in this particular situation, it will be fixed elliptic curve. Uh, so, there is a slight technicality here, and it's very important. 
for that uh, to uh, for that argument to work, we have to assume that uh, the uh, GCD GCD of a uh, rank and the degree. So degree will be always the degree of a. Uh, let me write it here. So. Okay, so this is the degree of Higgs field, Higgs shift, sorry, on X. So if you take the, the rank and the degree to be, uh, so the greatest common divisor of those two have to be one. In this case, in this case, you know that the same stable, there are no strictly same stable shifts. So same stable is equal to stable, and the, and this works just fine by the uh, by the arguments of the previous talks. So what we conclude is that uh, quasi maps to this model of uh, SLN uh, Higgs uh, bundles is uh, naturally isomorphic to, I will denote it like that, so it will be M SL, SL, SLN on uh, X times C. So what does it parameterize? So it parameterizes, it parameterizes kind of uh, this data, okay? So, the case of uh, pigeon end bundles is a bit more sophisticated. Degree, degree of f is fixed, yeah. But I'll, I'll, I'll drop it for I me mean, for, because I don't need it for the most of the. I mean, rank and degree is always fixed. I just don't mention it in notation because uh, I'll not need it anyway. I'll, it will come up only in the very end, and then I'll mention it. So I also don't say, at the moment, I don't say how the degree of a quasi map corresponds to the chain characters on the right hand side. And it's kind of very important I'll, as well. I will say it in just in the very end. At the moment, this is just a kind of identification of certain modular spaces, but you don't know. I mean, at the, at the moment, I'm not telling you how the degrees and chain characters correspond to each other on both sides. So, what is a what about a yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a, as well, it's, it's just. So what is the confusion? Make, make sense of any scheme. Yeah, it's any, it's any scheme, it doesn't, yeah, exactly. So SLN just refers to the fact that, uh, well, I mean, it's a bit of an abuse of notation, but it refers to the fact that you have a trace zero of your Higgs field and uh, that fixed determinant. So the fixed determinant is just SLN in some sense, right? Yeah, but you have your feet like from hive to a tensor Kx, from Kx tensor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And this, yeah. I mean, that's your question. Uh, being elliptic curve at this point yeah, is important, but important. yeah. Uh, but you can, yeah, exactly for that reason. Uh, but still, I mean, it's just it's just notation. <laughs> and so, so what about uh, the JLM case? Oh, I will just briefly mention it, but. It's a bit com more complicated, and it's where the the theory of the last talk doesn't apply. It means kind of, uh, you have to think a bit more about it here, and and so essentially it parameterizes the same kind of data, but for a for a kind of degenerate. So what is a sheaf, right? It's degenerate vector bundle. So <laughs> in this case, you parameterize also degenerate, not degenerate vector bundles, but degenerate Pigeland bundles. So I write it uh, degenerate. Uh, a PGLN uh, bundles with a uh, with Higgs fields uh, mathematically what does it mean so the next uh, approximation for the definition mathematically it means uh, you take uh, <laughs> you take generalized uh, as my algebras With a with a Higgs field, which is in this case will be the global sections of your Zermine algebras, tensor by the canonical. So 
So in the, the final approximation to the definition, so what is generalized as a my algebra? Well, generalized as a my algebra is an algebra that looks locally, it looks like a derived self home of some sheaf on your right. So when you restrict uh, to some open cover UI, uh, this is this algebra. Well, it's an object in a, in a derived category, and it's uh, uh, it's a weak I mean, algebra that is in the sense that it's um, object in a derived category, but not in a, a DG category, and it's uh, locally isomorphic to the R home of some sheaf. Okay. And so the notation as well, so the notation for this would be as uh, up there. So it will, I'll denote this to be MPGLN on X times C. Okay. But again, it's uh, nothing, it might seem a bit fancy, but it's just nothing complicated. It's, I mean, it's, it's a, case, a case of sheaves here, right? You, you take, you want to compactify the space, you take sheaves, not bundles. The same here, you just, you need to come up with some notion of a degenerate PGLN bundles, and the right notion is this uh, generalized as a my algebra. Well, usual as a my algebras are just algebras that are locally isomorphic to homes of some vector bundles. And this is exactly, I mean, there is this theorem, it's the same theorem as I mentioned before, is Stockholm, uh, Stockholm, uh, Noether theorem, it says that uh, essentially it says that these this guys, so the homes of uh, vector bundles, uh, give you the PGLN. So if you have an algebra that is locally a, a self home of some vector bundle, uh, this algebra can be represented by some PGLN bundle. Okay. And so now comes, so what, what happens? So, and this is very important. What if uh, uh, GCD is not equal to one? Well, in this case, you have strictly semi-stable objects. So your model space, even though it's of a finite type, it's, it's an artin stack. And uh, that considering um, like curve counting theories of an artin stack is not a simple problem. And so in this case, we really, what we do, we take, uh, we take our modular space and we define it. <laughs> and it's a bit funny, but I'll, I'll say a few words about it. We define it to be now the modular space of a SL, SLN uh, Higgs shifts on this product X times C. So the modular, of, uh, modular space of quasi-mouse from a fixed curve to an Artin stack. Uh, to, to the semi-stable locus of, uh, of this uh, Higgs shift on the, on the curve X is defined to be the modular space of uh, stable Higgs, uh, semi-stable Higgs shifts on X times C. Well, actually, we're not doing anything fancy here because it just, there is a problem in one direction. So in fact, being semi-stable, semi-stable here actually implies it's a quasi-map it, it represents a quasi-map, so generically it maps to the semi-stable locus. But it's just that qua being a quasi-map doesn't imply that you will actually produce a semi-stable shift on the product. So essentially, uh, this, this space, if you take it naively, it's huge, and we just impose an extra stability condition. An extra stability condition is that uh, the, the family of shifts that it represents this quasi-maps should be semi-stable themselves. It's automatic as soon as this, uh, you have this condition, as soon as you don't have any semi-stable objects. So these uh, two applica uh, implications, I mean, there are, uh, there are implications in both sides, but in this case, when you have semi-stable objects, there is implication on one side, and so we have to modify the definition. So this model space on the right is still a, a model space of quasi-maps, it's just that there is an extra stability. And in fact, you can, I mean, if you read the, if you read the notes of Witten on the geometric Langlands and this uh, mirror symmetry, there is, I mean, 
there is little like 15 or 20 pages note where in the very end he actually uh, talks about it he talks that about the fact that if you take uh, well if you take a semi-stable situation so if you, your model space has semi-stable uh, SLN the Higgs bundles then you have singularities right I mean in the sense that the core space has singularities so you cannot define uh, you cannot define the gram witten theory so the right uh, the right um, substitute, uh, substitute for uh, for model space of maps in that case is this is a model space of uh, sheaves on uh, on the product okay <laughs> so that's that's just definition and the same the same we do for um so the same we do for MPGLM. So in some sense, we're defining a, um, a ground witten theory of, uh, of an art and stuff. And it's, an, it's, it's absolutely necessary here because this relation will involve, I mean, it, it does f something funny on the, on the level of, um, yeah. It can, it, when you take curves on one side, you have to take, to take curves in all degrees on the other side of, uh, I mean, for you take a number of curves in the model space of vigilant bundles for, for all degrees. I mean, there is only finitely many because you kind of consider things up to twist by line bundles. Like, like, let me stop here. So, uh, so this is a, this is the solution to the problem. And um, oh yeah, so what I want to say now. So what is this? What is this model space of sheaves? So, so Tanaka Thomas, well, this, I mean, the enumerative geometry of these guys are, is, is well defined. I mean, it's, uh, it's the same, you can view it differently. You can view it as a DT theory on the threefold when you, uh, of a type, you take a total space of a cotangent bundle and you take product with a curve, or you can view it as a DT theory, or like an extension of Donaldson theory with a, where you don't consider just sheaves, but you add a Higgs field. And so, so I mean, mathematically it's well defined, but Tanaka and Thomas, they also showed that uh, the formulas that you get from the counting of sheaves in this model spaces. So this, let's say, uh, so actually this holds for any surface and we, it's a bit confusing. So the role of a surface in this talk and the role of a surface in the previous talks is a bit different. So don't get confused. So what I want to say is that you can define the same model spaces for any surface, not just a product of curves. And uh, Tanaka Thomas showed that, uh, well, these guys, they produce, reproduce uh, invariants, uh, invariants of uh, Waffa, and Witten's uh, 4D, I'll write silly words again, 4D, sorry, silly for, for me, but silly not for someone else probably, 4D, 